Holiday Pops, a beloved Boston tradition started by legendary conductor Arthur Fiedler in 1973. Today, Keith Lockhart spreads seasonal joy to audiences in Symphony Hall and beyond. Well, I love Holiday Pops. I've always been a uh, Christmas junkie. Every Christmas, the Pops brighten the holiday for the littlest patients at Children's Hospital. In 2005, Lockhart introduced matinees tailored for kids and now sensory-friendly concerts. It's become a big thing in performing arts organizations these days that not everybody can take advantage of our traditional offerings in the traditional way that we offer them. Here, children and adults with sensory sensitivities or on the autism spectrum are able to experience the magic of live music in an accepting environment. A lot of our clients' music is something that can unlock language for them, so we have young children who, before they can speak, will respond to music and sing. And just the cultural experience of getting to come and experience you know, music here at, at Symphony Hall was also really meaningful. Parent response has been overwhelming. They said there are so few places that we can enjoy anything as a family, that we can do what other families do. When is it more important for families to be together than during the holidays? How do you feel seeing that young audience? To look out into the hall, to see the looks on kids' faces. <laughs> Music as an agent of wonder could be the best gift that we could possibly give them. The gift of music is a year-round commitment here in Symphony Hall, but it's not confined to the hall, says Leslie Wu Foley, Director of Education and Community Engagement. So part of the focus of our work is to help put the Boston and Boston Symphony Orchestra. A lot of our programs are youth-focused, but we view youth and schools and educators as being at the heart of any community. So by reaching the youth of a community, you're really touching their families um, and their neighborhoods. From youth concerts to programs like Days in the Arts in the Berkshires, the exposure to music, says Foley, has inspired many of today's professional musicians. When I see young people in the hall or in our audiences when we're performing outside of the hall, every single time I get a physical chill, knowing that at any point during that performance, that could be the aha moment for that child. Foley, herself a cellist, found her aha moment on a family outing to Tanglewood, the BSO's summer home. And I remember lying on a blanket and looking up at the stars and hearing this music wash over me. And I think at that particular moment, I thought, this is going to have to be a part of my life. So I am here because of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Mariana Greenhill knew she wanted to play the violin at the tender age of two when her mother brought her to symphony concerts hidden inside her coat. My earliest memory in Symphony Hall is looking through the gates and being able to look through and see the violins. And then I told my mother that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play the violin. By age nine, Hill was performing in Project STEP, a program started by the BSO. Today, she is artistic advisor. Project STEP is a string training educational program for students from minority communities that are typically not seen on the symphony stage. I graduated in 1997. And then I went on to the Juilliard School of Music for my bachelor's and my master's program. Now Hill performs and teaches, sharing her love of music with these students at Boston Arts Academy. I love my students at Boston Arts Academy. They are <laughs> an adventure <laughs> every single day. The greatest part is that they come from all over the city. She opens their eyes to music of all genres. I think that it's incredibly important that students grow up and know the music of where they come from and from other places. Setting the stage for perhaps more aha moments that began by extension here in Symphony Hall. I love the hall. It brings back tremendous memories. And the presence of children in Symphony Hall this Christmas is not only in the audience. One of the most anticipated moments is our benediction moment where the orchestra plays and the chorus sings, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. 
We had the idea that our best collaborators on this would be the children, whose, whose future it is we're talking about. So we went uh, out to the Boston Public Schools and uh, met a lot of really, truly wonderful kids. We had them join us in singing Let There Be Peace on Earth. I think people may find the moment even more poignant than in previous years. certainly sound great. Holiday Pops continues through December 31st and includes special kid matinees. There will be additional sensory friendly concerts in February and March. The Boston Pops worked with several local autism organizations to make these concerts a reality. A good time was had by all from the musicians to those in the audience. Up next, more holiday sounds from the Pops.